Hey, everybody. It's the Drive to School Podcast. I am Pastor Goodman, your host. Uh, my buddy, Pastor Matt Richard, is back. How are you doing? It's good to see you, Harrison. It's good to see you, too. Um, I, I love talking to you. Whenever we record, it's usually right after you were uh, you were sitting around with a whole bunch of pastors studying the text, and so you've always got all these kind of deep thoughts to bring to me. Um, it just <laughs> it makes my day. Well, you know, I feel bad. It's like, it's like, hey, what do you think about this? We could talk about this today. And it's like, it's this humongous thing. And like, yeah, that's good. But okay, we got to boil it down. So I, I right. appreciate, you know, I mean, well, because our theology has to, the rubber has to meet the road. Otherwise, it's just trapped in the theoretical. Yeah, I guess you'd say that. You know? Right. You can talk around a thing for hours and hours on end with people who are also interested in it, but to actually distill it down into those, you know, those, those little bits that actually start to, to matter in real life, it, it shows that this book is not just sort of a hobby horse. It's, it's actually, it's a hope um, because pastors love alliteration. <laughs> um, so uh, we were talking uh, a little bit before we, we started recording and um, what does it mean to have Jesus in your heart? Um, because the scriptures talk this way. You we were, we were looking at some texts, but also um, there's a lot of ways we maybe shouldn't talk this way too, right? Well, and, and that's what I was mentioning to you and I was mentioning today. I said, you know, I, I, I told the guys, I said, we're wrestling with a passage where Paul t- talks about how he, he, he hopes for the church of Ephesus to have Christ dwelling in their heart by faith. And, and I just, I said to the guys, I said, you know, I know what Paul's saying here, but I just, I find myself just kind of going, ah, you know, and I'm like, why is that? Why, why, you know, I, I know my wife tells me that I'm becoming more and more curmudgeon and cranky every day. You know, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm like, why, why do I react that way? And I, and I, it dawned on me here uh, before talking to you as I was kind of wrestling with this is oftentimes we associate the idea of the heart with the emotions. Uh, so we think about Hallmark cards, right? And so with Hallmark cards, it's all appealing to the heart. And so we think the head, we think intellect, the head, mm-hmm. rational, black and white, one plus one equals two. And then we think, you know, maybe the lower stomach, that's going to be, you know, the, the spot of us. Where gut, we, yeah. Our gut, we have butterflies in our stomach. Or if we eat too many tacos, we don't feel good down there, you know. <laughs> and and then, but in this section right here, in this midsection, we always think that's what? More feelings. We think that's more right. love and, 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 and follow and your decide. heart literally means disregard all rational thought and just do the thing. Um, right. And, right. Uh, and so we disconnect the heart from the head and the stomach, and mm-hmm. we just kind of have these feelings here. And so this idea of like, you know, Paul sitting in a prison, you know, telling to the church in Ephesus, you know, Christ be in your heart. I mean, I'm kind of reacting because I'm thinking, is, is Paul sending, you know, hey, hey, church of Ephesus, I'm sending you positive vibes, you know, positive feelings in Jesus. Jesus be with you with happy thoughts. And that's yeah, why I, I mean, react. Obviously, the, the happy thoughts are not going to necessarily get him out of out of prison or or cure your cancer or or raise the dead or forgive your sins. Um, you can sort of send good vibes somebody's way all you want, but um, I, I I struggle to find that to be sort of a, a real thing so much as a, a perspective. And and it's good to have an optimistic perspective. I wish I could do better at it, but I, I mean, where where the rubber hits the road. Um, well, there are times where being overly optimistic just makes you overly disconnected from reality. And there, there's sort of also the, the other side of it where, um, you know, just following your heart can get you in an awful lot of trouble. And, and so when, when people sort of say, you know, I've got Jesus in my heart and Jesus is really telling my heart to do, and then it immediately goes against one of the Ten Commandments. I can say, well, so maybe the head and the heart should meet. Maybe the two aren't, aren't quite as disconnected as you'd like them to be. Um, and and the more we sort of peel them apart, it's usually so we can disregard one or the other. But that's not how they they talked in the Old Testament. It wasn't sort of an attempt to say let's go with emotion and disregard knowledge, or let's be curmudgeons and and go with knowledge and disregard all emotion. Um, but what if the <laughs> two were actually connected? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I mean, and that's that's the modern problem that we have. We 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 disconnect the head and the heart, and we almost sometimes um, we take the head and the heart, and we 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 pit them against each other. You know, mm-hmm. oftentimes, and and that's not correct either. Whereas in the Old Testament, my understanding, and, and if somebody else is a, well, doesn't take much to be a better Hebrew scholar than, than I am, um, but my understanding is there's no Hebrew word in the Old Testament to re- reference the brain. Uh, so when it talks about the heart, uh, when the, the Old Testament scriptures talk about the heart, it's talking about the seat of the emotions as well as, and I would say even above and beyond, it's the intellect, it's the passions, it's the desires, the conscience, um, it's, it encompasses the whole human being. And mm-hmm. so the heart is not just exclusively the emotions, but the heart in the Old Testament encompasses 
the head, the intellect, and all that, as well as the passions, um, the, the, the emotions, the conscience, it encompasses the whole person. And so when, when Paul says uh, in Scripture and other places where we want Christ in our heart, uh, it's not Christ with our emotions, it's Christ what in us and through us and for us on everything. Uh, that he would, we would be captive to Jesus and His Word, uh, not only in our emotions but also in our conscience, having a clean conscience in Jesus, as well as having our mind shaped and formed to to think like Christ and to function that way. And so, it's not just exclusively just a motive uh, section; it, it's the whole human person. Right. It's it's for your emotions, but it's not defined by your emotions. And and what I mean by that is is that um it seems like a lot of the places where Jesus needs to sort of enter my heart is to stop it from doing dumb stuff, uh, to stop it from feeling um the things that it should not feel, either uh just absolutely in love with with the things that are, are harmful to me that are sinful, um, or absolutely ashamed of the things that I've done that I know to be sinful. Um Jesus sort of needs to come in here and, and actually address what's what's wrong. Uh usually by putting my heart to death and then raising it back up. So there's a, the prophet Ezekiel, he, he talks about this. Yeah. He says, um, I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. I will remove the heart of stone from yeah. your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Like to have Jesus in your heart, it, it's actually that that um, something has to 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 be ripped out of you and something new has to be put into you. Otherwise, you're going to be even that much more at war with yourself because your emotions and your intellect isn't always going to line up. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's just, it's just, it's such a, beautiful picture what Ezekiel says and it's 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 um Paul talks this way too as well as living by the spirit living by the mm-hmm. influence and the power of the Holy Spirit and and the, the Holy Spirit uh gives us holy impulses not only in our emotions but our mind as well and that happens as we abide in his word and I mean you think about this all the time with all these metaphors and and parables of Jesus where he says I'm the vine you are the branches apart from you can do nothing and mm-hmm. so we are branches and we are abiding in Christ by faith and as we abide in Christ, uh, receiving his good gifts, the forgiveness of sins, his word and sacrament for us, uh, the the promise of the gospel poured into our ears and so forth, then there's going to be that good fruit as we abide. Uh, But then what ends up happening, we oftentimes want to what we're prone to want and prone to leave the God that we love and and go our own route and to trust our heart apart from Christ uh, being Mm -hmm. uh, our old, our old flesh, our old heart. We run back to that kind of like that, that verse where it says the dog returning to its own vomit. I mean, a real kind of tough tough kind of thing but, but that's yeah. what we do and to run back to that and then we get tied up in a knot and then we need to repent again return to the god that loves us or uh, repent unto christ and remember where we belong in our baptisms Right. It's it sort of um, right here. It hits the road because there, there are going to be times where where your emotions are all on fire for something that you're going to have to to contrast with the scriptures that speak very clearly against there are also going to be parts where you just don't feel on fire for for god at all you, you don't feel near to god at, at all and and so the thing of focus is not the heart but the, the things that feed the heart the things that that uh the, the holy spirit uses to enter your heart and, and make it captive um the things that that call you back away from the vomit uh and, and back towards the lord so so if you're you happen to be uh the, the branches, you would look to the vine. Um, if you happen to be the Christian, you would look to the baptism. You would look to the preaching. You, you would not simply try and measure Jesus by, do I feel it? But but is it feeding me? You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Well, and, and again, over and over and over, um, you think about these these pictures, right? Uh, he's the mm-hmm. good shepherd. We're the sheep. Where do sheep belong? They belong by the shepherd. Uh, we are a house to be set upon a firm rock, and the rock is Christ. Uh, the potter and the clay, we are clay being shaped and formed by the potter he shapes and forms us uh we are servants he is our master we are Mm -hmm. children he is our father i mean you have these beautiful connections where you don't expect to see a sheep by itself you don't see it you don't expect to see a child all by himself in the mall walking around you don't expect to see a bunch of clay without uh, hands forming and shaping that clay uh and so all these beautiful metaphors of the scripture uh they all play together and so you know jesus in our heart, you bet. Uh, Jesus governing and and uh, leading and guiding and and uh, giving holy impulses in my emotions, our emotions, our our mind, our thoughts, um, our, our our all of our being, giving giving us a clean conscience, uh, abiding in Him as as a branch. Uh, that's where it's at, and and so so we can celebrate this and say, God be praised uh, that 
Christ is given to us and we are given to Christ, uh, that we're baptized into him. And uh, so we, we, we are plunged into his death and resurrection through baptism. And he's given to us in the Holy Supper. He's given to us in the word. And there's that, that, that holy connection uh, by faith, mm -hmm. being connected to Jesus uh, each and every day. And when we uh, leave that connection, God be praised that he seeks us out like that shepherd seeking the lost sheep. And he what? He, he, he ropes us back in repentance and faith uh, back into where we actually belong. Right. Uh, just kind of to, to, to lean on this one last point as we start to close down, um, we kind of were talking beforehand and, and we were talking a little bit about my background. Uh, I wasn't raised in the church. I wasn't raised in the faith. Um, my heart was usually more at peace with it before uh, before Christ. I, 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 it, it's like one of those things that that's sort of hard to say out loud because it sounds so, so ungodly. Uh, but but I was actually I was a lot more OK with with myself and my actions and my desires uh, before before Christianity. Um, when, when you sort of say you have Jesus in your heart, does that mean you're not going to have any more sort of like weird feelings? You're, you're going to just always feel at peace. You're, you're never going to have wants that disagree. Like what does it mean to, to have Jesus in your heart and in terms of how it feels? Yeah, I would say that it, it actually becomes worse in a lot of ways. <laughs> <laughs> right, I mean, it. it I mean, well, num number one, when we're baptized, we get a we get a we get a, a target on our back for the evil one. You know, we've been snatched from darkness to light in baptism, and so we have a target on our back because of the evil one. But not only that, I, I love it how one of um, an old pastor used to say say it that when you're baptized into Christ and given the Holy Spirit and you abide with Jesus, uh, the civil war begins. And who does the civil war begin with? Uh, now, keep in mind, a, a, a war is going to usually fought with another another country, another entity, but a civil war is what? Within one's own boundary. And so we have that civil war right here. Hmm. And uh, so as, as I recall, real briefly here, I recall teaching on this in one of the churches. And I just said, you know, the biggest problem in this, in this church, and I'm looking around at some of the people, I said, you know, what's the biggest problem in the church? And I pointed to, let's just say Jan, and she goes, Jan's the biggest problem in this church. And I said, okay, how about you? Well, who's the biggest problem in this church? He said, Scott, his name was Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I come to this guy named Kelly. I said, Kelly, who's the biggest problem in this church? He goes, Pastor Richard. <laughs> But uh, the, the point being is the biggest problem in this Christian faith is right Me? here. Yeah. It's hard. And that's where daily repentance is, um, repenting unto Christ and hearing the forgiveness of sins. And, uh, you know, so, yeah, the world is a problem. The devil's a problem. But right here, that civil war with ourselves is is really close to home. Right. So So when we're losing the civil war, where do we go? Yeah, we go back to Jesus, right? Where we belong, right? Where we've been snatched unto where we're baptized into. Yeah. The one who uh, dwells with us and we with him. And that's what it means to have Jesus in your heart. Absolutely. Pastor, thanks so much. All right. Thanks, Harrison. Have a good one.